Season 3, Episode 2 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing the Atlantic Theatre Company production of Days of Wine and Roses off-Broadway at the Linda Gross Theatre at 336 West 20th Street in New York City, running through July 16th. Based on the play by J.P. Miller and the Warner Brothers film of the same name, the new musical, Days of Wine and Roses, is a brutally candid look at the destructive nature of alcoholism. With the book by Craig Lucas and music and lyrics by Adam Guttel, the musical is directed by Michael Greif, and he and his team make a concerted effort to make Days of Wine and Roses feel like it was lifted right out of the 1950s, from Didi Ait's excellent costumes to the score that, though it isn't a literal lift of the jazz styles of the time, it is colored with tones from that period, especially with Gretel's prominent use of marimba and vibraphone. Think of the works of Lionel Hampton and Henry Mancini, but arranged with a 21st century mind. It makes the music excitingly modern, but with a foot firmly set in a period the musical is set in. The mix of modern and classic creates a challenging score for the two leads, Brian Darcy James and Kelly O'Hara, as I would guess about half the songs don't offer much assistance with the melody. But if you're going to have a score with tricky jazz harmonies, where there is no melodic support, having two supremely talented singers like Brian Darcy James and Kelly O'Hara is essential. Darcy James plays Joe Clay, a hard-drinking public relations rep for a high-profile New York business. While on a business cruise, he meets Kirsten Arneson, played by O'Hara, who is a teetotaler. It's not exactly clear what kind of cruise it is, but it reminds me of one of those booze cruises that trek around the south end of Manhattan. After some persistence, Joe gets Kirsten to have her first drink, and the two quickly become lovers. They also quickly become alcoholics, and their entire relationship becomes dependent upon their drinking to be happy. Though I admire the message Days of Wine and Roses makes, the musical's efforts to maintain a sense of period carries a bit too far, as I feel that the story is very heavy-handed. It almost sometimes feels like an advertisement for Alcoholics Anonymous from the 1950s. Not that promoting AA is a bad thing, and I do hope this show does help people who come see it discover their own alcohol problems. I just wish that I didn't feel like I just got slapped across the head with a copy of 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. Though there is the handicap of having to act with such an aggressive book, Brian Darcy James and Kelly O'Hara commit to it and give deeply moving performances. O'Hara's Kirsten's descent into alcoholism is brutal, and I'm always thrilled to hear her get to have her vocals soar like the stellar soprano she is. There are a couple numbers in there where she is really spotlighted as a vocalist. Joe, fighting to find purpose with his life, hits rock bottom, and Darcy James fills his performance with desperation and then inspiration. I would have liked Greif to pull Darcy James back just a little bit at the beginning, making him a little more charming and a little less aggressively cocky. Not much, but just a touch. It would have made that early connection between Joe and Kirsten a little more palatable and make the emotions later feel a little more earned. An interesting facet of Days in Wine and Roses is that, aside from the several moments where Joe and Kirsten's daughter Lila sings, played beautifully by Ella Dane Morgan, none of the other six cast members sing on stage. This is an interesting choice, especially for Byron Jennings, who gives a deeply desperate and moving performance as Kirsten's father, who is credited as just Arnison, who has a significant amount of stage time, and it would seem natural that he would have a song or two. The same can be said for David Jennings, who plays Jim Hungerford, a beleaguered AA sponsor, with heart and warmth, who deserves a song of his own as well, or maybe a duet or a trio to be a part of. Though Lizzie Clacken's set design doesn't initially feel too complex, it quickly builds and expands and becomes a wonderfully detailed set with a greenhouse that fills up the upstage and a sliding platform downstage that reveals a little water elements that isn't exactly necessary, but having it there adds that little bit of extra detail that elevates it just a little bit more. Days of Wine and Roses feels dated in its book. I think the conflict between Joe and Kirsten and the addressing of alcoholism could have been a bit more textured. I think a few adjustments in all this would have helped a lot. And adding two or three more songs for a couple of the supporting characters. And this could be an excellent show. But it's still good and worth seeing. Darcy James and O'Hara give great performances. And the music is excellent to hear and very exciting. 
But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Days of Wine and Roses, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. You can support my channel by becoming a patron over on my Patreon page. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the off-Broadway musical Rock and Roll Man. Thank you for watching, especially thank you to my patrons, and I will see you at the theater.